Hello and welcome to another video. Now this video is going to be about mathematical induction because we'll be doing a proof. We want to prove that 11 raised to power n minus 4 raised to power n will always be divisible by 7 as long as n is a positive integer. So it means if n is 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or whatever number as long as it's a finite positive integer when you subtract this from this you'll always get another number divisible by 7. And we want to prove that in a short time. But we want to just show it. And I want you to know that if this was changed to, let's say it is 7 to the power n minus 3 to the power n, well, 7 minus 3 is 4. Well, that number or whatever you get will always be divisible by 4. So get it. So the same thing, let's say I said 5 raised to power n minus 3 raised to power n. See, this will always be an even number because 5 minus 3 is 2. Okay, because when you expand this, this is going to be 5 minus 3 times some long expression if we use the binomial expansion kind of uh, principle. Okay, but I'm just letting you know that it's always divisible by the difference between the two bases and you have to be able to show that using um, mathematical induction. So, whatever I do now applies to every case that you see. The first thing I'm going to do is show you the steps. The very first step you need to take is to um, test for the first number. So the first natural number will be, remember, this, this problem reads that you should prove that 11 to the n minus 4 to the n is always divisible by 7 for all n in the set of natural numbers. So the first natural number is 1. So what you're going to do is test first whether it is true when n is equal to 1. So we're going to say, our proposition when n is equal to 1 is 11 raised to power 1 minus 4 to power 1 um, is divisible by 7. Well, let's check. This is going to be 11 minus 4, which is 7. Well, 7 is divisible by 7, so this is true. Okay, now we're going to say since it was true for n equals 1, then it has to be true we're going to assume, so the next thing is we're going to assume that it is true when n is equal to k. Now what is k? We don't know, but k is just an integer at any point. It could be 1000 or 742. We're going to assume that it's true. And so we're going to say the second proposition is when p, when we have a proposition when n equals k, then we're going to say that um, 11 to the k minus 4 to the k is divisible by 7. Now the way to write this is going to say it has to be 7 times something. So if you say an expression is divisible by 7, you're saying that that expression is 7 times something. For example, if I say 20 is divisible by 2, I'm saying 20 is 2 times something and we know that that something has to be 10. So I'm, I can write it this way, equals 7 multiplied by m. So I can use m in this case where m has to be uh, an integer, so m is an integer, so I can put it in parentheses and say, um, let's use this. So I can say that m is an integer, something like this. So this covers this assumption that this is divisible by 7. So another way to say this is divisible by 7 is to say this is 7 times an integer. Okay, not a fraction, not a decimal, an integer m belongs to the set of integers and we're going to say assume it is true for k assume true for n equals k so those are the first two steps you take in all cases yes in all cases especially if there are no um, special cases if it's just general for general mathematical induction this is what you do the first thing you test for the first term sometimes it doesn't start from one if the condition says where n is equal to any number greater than two then it means you have to start from three or four now in this case we're just taking all natural numbers that's why we started from one which is the most common case now if you assume that it is true for k then the third proposition 
is that it is true for k plus 1. Okay, so if we have a case for k plus 1, then you have a proposition that um, when n is k plus 1, that is the next term after k, remember we have assumed that it is true for k, then we're going to assume, we're going to test whether it is true for k plus 1. And all we have to show is that when we put k plus 1 to replace k, it is also divisible by 7. Okay, so let's see how we do that. It's simple, it's just basic algebra that you need to do to get this done. So here, this proposition is such that 11 raised to k plus 1 minus 4 raised to k plus 1 has to be divisible by 7. Okay, it has to be 7 times something. But we want to see what this will look like. So I want to work with this and see if I'm going to get 7 times something on the other side. So let's continue here. So I have 11 with, I'm going to say, um, equals 7 times something. Let's, we don't know what that something is. So I'm just going to put um, a giant, um, let's say X. Okay, we don't know what this giant X is going to be, but we're going to assume that. Put a question mark. Okay, put a question mark here because we don't know. But now let's go back here and see. So we have 11 to the k plus 1 minus 4 to the k plus 1 um, will be equal to, if we do our basic um, algebra 1 math, this is going to be 11 to the k times 11 because that's the meaning of this, right? And then this is going to be minus 4 to the k times 4. Okay, let's see if we can further simplify this. Um, this is the same thing as, hey, let's bring the 11 forward. 11 times 11 raised to power k minus 4 times 4 raised to power k. Okay? Um, now, this is the trick which you should employ every time. Okay, remember that. Now, there are three numbers involved in this problem we're dealing with. We have 11, we have 4, and 7. And those are the three numbers you want to try and employ. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rewrite 11, or I'm going to rewrite 4. You choose whichever you want to write. It's possible to rewrite 11 as 7 plus 4. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write this as 7 plus 4 times 11 raised to power k minus 4 times 4 raised to power k, okay? You see that? This is going to be equal to, now I'm going to distribute, this is 7 times 11 raised to power k plus 4 times 11 raised to power k, 11 minus 4 times 4 raised to power k. Do you see that? So from what you can see, I have 7 times 11 raised to power k times 11 raised to power k. Then I have this and this. I can factor out 4. And what do I get? That's going to be plus 4 times. Here I have 11 raised to power k minus 4 raised to power k. Do you see something familiar with what we assumed was true in this line? We said 11 raised to power k minus 4 raised to power k equals 7m. We assumed it was true. And on that assumption, we can come back here and say 11 raised to power k minus 4 raised to power k can be replaced with 7m. So watch me. This is now going to be 7 times 11 raised to power k plus 4 times, what do we say this is? It's going to be 7m. Oh, now I can factor out even the 7 all the way to the back here. And I have this is 7 times 11 raised to the power k plus, now it's just going to be 4m. Because this would have been 28m, so it's 4m. And this is now the giant x that I didn't know what it was, which I still don't know what it was. But I know that 7 is multiplying something. And remember, k is an integer. Okay, all the values we are picking for n are all in the set of natural numbers, okay, which are positive integers, and that's where we go. So here, we have proved this question mark is no longer valid. It is actually without a question now, without a doubt, that 11 
raised to power k plus 1 minus 4 raised to power k plus 1 is equal to 7 times that giant x where this giant x is definitely an integer. How do I know it's an integer? Because this is an integer and 4 times an integer is also an integer. And that's the conclusion of this mathematical induction proof. And it applies to every number. Just know the three numbers to work with. This, this, and this number are the numbers you will need when you get here to make your substitution. You can substitute for the first one or the second one. Just get the right quantity. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.